Well, good morning, everybody. It is uh, finally Friday. Top of uh, top of the end of the week to you. Friday, May eighth. I've got Rusty Dewey's the logger who's going to be joining me in just about 30 minutes this morning at uh, 730. But uh, welcome to the beginning of the weekend. You know, for most of us, uh, Friday is, you know, that day, the day of the week where we're so excited that the weekend has finally arrived because we can kick back and uh, uh, relax and, and screw the lid on the top of the uh, of the top of the week, tighten it down. And uh, yeah. Uh, but this is uh, a time when the people that are working need a weekend more than ever. And the folks that, um, that are unemployed, uh, frankly, have lost track what day it is. Don't even know that it's uh, Friday, it seems like. But it is so important to stay connected during this pandemic. That's why Aired Out uh, has uh, continued to uh, broadcast now from uh, my home studio, and it is an absolute pleasure to have you on board. A Friday, May 8th, National Child Care Provider Appreciation Day. Well, I tell you, people that take care of uh, kids, and a lot of it is uh, now falling on the, on the hands of parents, but uh, for the folks that, uh, that do take care of children, especially the uh, the daycares that are still open and operating, school teachers, whoever it may be. Um, you're all angels. I don't know how you do it. Uh, one, one is plenty in a room for me, but uh, you get a bunch of kids in there. <sighs> Talk about a, uh, a thankless job and a tiresome job. That would be it right there. Also, uh, National Have a Coke Day today and national student nurses day on this uh, national nurses week and national nursing home week um can we say enough about the nurses the lnas lpns um all staff especially the ones that are uh, behind the scenes at nursing homes these days. I don't think we can say enough about them. Uh, we are so blessed to have them um, day in and day out being on the front line, taking care of the elderly, the sick, our moms and dads, um, our relatives, whoever they may be. Um, thank you to all of the nurses, and the entire staff of every nursing home in America, as well as uh, every uh, hospital, any kind of healthcare facility, man, we uh, we love and appreciate you so much. I want to thank my presenting sponsors this morning of Aired Out Aeromed Essentials. Uh, 505 1405. That's the phone number for Lauren Andrews, the owner of Aeromed Essentials on State Street in Montpelier and in the Berlin Mall. She's taking uh, orders from home and shipping her amazing products straight to your door. If you get on aeromedessentials.com, you can do your shopping right there and just give her a phone call 505 1405 and she'll get it in the mail to you um, like this. And I love this stuff. This is the uh, Turmeric and Ginger CBD oil from Aeromed Essentials. Love this. Couple drops under the tongue, couple times a day, twice a day. This is uh, had made has made such a huge difference with the inflammation and the pain that I from the end of this uh, the backside of this uh, surgery that I had on my wrist back in March. This stuff has huge difference you know they say that um kale has really potent uh anti-inflammatory properties this stuff does too big time so if you don't like kale 
get into the CBD oil. That'll help the inflammation. And this stuff, too, is the relief lotion from Aromed Essentials. Every night, couch, me, and this jar right here, rubbing it into the wrist. You got uh, any kind of uh, joint pain, muscle pain, that's the magic right there. Uh, get in touch with uh, Aeromed Essentials to order some up. Fontaine Forestry and Millwork of East Montpelier, Route 14, just below Bragg Farm. I was over there yesterday uh, chatting up with uh, Mark Fontaine and his wife, Sharon, his lovely wife, Sharon. What great people over there. Saw the miser and looked around a little bit and ordered up some rough cut fencing and some uh, cedar fence posts. They've got the um, the bark mulch right now the cedar bark mulch and the hemlock mulch at $5 for a two cubic foot bag. That's a great deal. And they also have got uh, wood chips too. Um, and if you want to get it by the, uh, uh, by the load, you want to get a, uh, what is it? A, a yard. It's a 25 bucks a yard for wood chips and uh, 40 bucks a yard for the mulch and they'll deliver it to you this is uh and as you saw i posted on uh, facebook there they've got a huge pile of it and they're making it fresh right there i mean the, the smell when you um as christy hamill was saying when you when you roll onto the property it's just it's awesome get over to fontaine forestry and millwork just below bragg farm uh right electric of barry Thank you, Chris Wright and Gothier's Quality Grounds and Maintenance of Orange. Uh, Jason Gothier now with Trash King Trash Removal, a busy, busy man who's going to be mowing and weed whacking and landscaping like a madman. So again, uh, Rusty Dewey's coming on this morning with us at uh, 730. And, you know, I haven't been in touch with Rusty for quite a while now this this may possibly be the longest run uh that i haven't spoken with with rusty so we're just going to be connecting in with him in about uh, 20 minutes or so and just kind of you know unedited we're going to find out what he's been up to what he's been doing uh what he's got uh, planned for the future and you know i'm just kind of curious what he's what he's been doing over there at the homestead so we're going to find out and uh, share a few laughs with him uh vermont uh, news here's the latest this morning state officials are reporting eight new coronavirus cases in the green mountain state no new deaths though which is great news from the virus um have been provided in the uh, daily update provided by the state yesterday um Thank God. Number of people who have tested positive for coronavirus is now 916 in Vermont. Um, we try to keep it, uh, you know, positive as much as we can, uh, but also uh, staying real and truthful and honest here on Aired Out. Uh, the, the good news is, and I'm always digging for well, the upside of it is that most of those who were diagnosed with coronavirus here in Vermont, again, 916, most have recovered. More than 18,000 people have been tested for the virus in Vermont. 18,000. Uh, let's see what else we have. The developer of the Delayed City Place project in Burlington plans to restart construction this year. Whoop de doo. Uh, Rutland Regional Medical Center resuming some elective procedures. As you know, uh, Central Vermont Hospital and uh, uh, University of Vermont are as well. The, the governor gave hospitals the uh, green light to go ahead and resume elective surgeries on Monday. The final step for hospitals will be when the state allows patients to remain at the hospital for post operative stays so i guess if you go in now and you i'm assuming you you go in for your elective surgery um you're out of there <laughs> as fast as possible 
which is kind of the the skinny on it, I guess, is the situation. But again, I'm, I'm guessing. So for the first time since 2014, the number of overdoses, overdose deaths in Vermont has declined. I saw this yesterday popped up on my uh, feed. Uh, state public health officials say there were 111 overdose deaths in the state in 2019. That's a 15 percent drop from 2018, but still alarming as hell, isn't it, though? Combination of education and treatment of overdose victims with the antidote drug Narcan have helped reduce uh, overdose deaths. Wow. Just uh, glancing through some of the uh, uh, the headlines this morning, and I love to uh, find out what's going on in the world uh, musically right now. First off, um, being that it is Friday night, um, kind of goes without saying that uh, Tim Brick is going to be doing his uh, his show uh, tonight, uh, live from the man cave. And then tomorrow night, Saturday night will be uh, Chad Hollister, who I think uh, does a regular scheduled show every Saturday night at, um, at seven o'clock. So tune in tonight. And I know that, uh, Donna Thunder is going to be coming on the show here at some point real soon. And if you follow her Facebook page, you can get uh, a listing of a whole bunch of Vermont musicians who are performing live from their homes. And you, you, you could honestly just sit back and watch every, every night of the week, um, Vermonters performing um, from their homes from their home studios and you know we, we say that if you if it's possible for you to make some kind of uh, donation to support them uh, buy one of their albums you can you can uh, you can do that right online um t-shirt hat whatever it may be uh, but you know throw them a couple of bucks if you can most of the musicians put up uh some kind of fundraising link that is uh, either attached to their performance or in the background, uh, something that you can see, uh, and it's easy to do. Bob Dylan has come out with a new uh, single, False Prophet, from his forthcoming album, Rough and Rowdy Ways, his first album of original songs in eight years. Go, Bob. Uh, the boss, Bruce Springsteen, offering words of hope, to his listeners stuck at home on East Street Radio this week, uh, Springsteen reassured his listeners that we'll all get through this pandemic and said, as hard as it is to believe right now, your children will go back to school, churches will be open and full, and you will once again hug and kiss family members at your gatherings. Um, and you will be shouting over the noise of a crowded bar and ordering a drink and speaking with your friends. Um, so nice to be reminded of that. Thanks, uh, Bruce. He's going to perform from home, by the way, uh, Monday night, this coming Monday night for the Rise Up New York COVID-19 Relief Benefit. And we'll be talking more about that uh, Monday morning here on Aired Out. But uh, that's going to be huge. Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, reportedly had to get up and leave several times while watching a new documentary about himself. Uh, his son, Jack, told Access Hollywood this week that there's uh, a part in the documentary where his father is diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, and it made Ozzy so uncomfortable that he had to, uh, to walk out. Uh, he said Ozzy left uh, several other times during the documentary because it's, uh, it's really honest. And at times, uh, not such a flattering portrayal of Ozzy. Uh, the Nine Lives of Ozzy Osbourne is going to appear on A&E this summer. I know there's going to be a few uh, Black Sabbath fans that are going to be turning in, or tuning into that. 
Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Um, oh, Queen guitarist Brian May. I heard about this. Uh, he says that he injured his rear end, his buttocks, in a gardening accident. Hang on, there's more. He described it at length yesterday in an Instagram post and said that he was in a hospital after he ripped his gluteus maximus to shreds in a moment of over-enthusiastic gardening. Now, we just, uh, we just put our garden in uh, a few days ago. And at times I've been over enthusiastic and um, I've worked myself uh, and my body in in ways and to levels that I haven't uh, done in a long time. But at no point uh, while I was pulling stones out and rototilling was I ever imagining that I could rip my gluteus maximus to shreds. But anyway. Um, he says, I won't be able to walk for a while or sleep without a, lot, uh, without a lot of assistance because the pain is relentless. So he says he's going to be going dark for a little while. 72 years old. Just recorded a, a new version of We Are the Champions. I don't know if you've heard it. Uh, all to raise money for COVID-19 relief. But was it, the, was it the rototiller that got away from it? No one knows. But I'm just as curious as, as you are how we can tear up the old rear into shreds while gardening. I mean, if you were to crash in the motorcycle or, or you know, I don't know. But gardening, we'll find out. I'll find out, I promise. And I'll let you know. Um, Alex Rodriguez and J-Lo have put their uh, their wedding on hold, if you care. Uh, Disney Plus is bringing back National Treasure, new series based on the film, it is in the works for the streaming platform. Uh, the, the A third movie is also being made, uh, but Nicolas Cage and others haven't been uh, confirmed for the third installment yet. What else do we have? Um, just checking uh, some of the uh, tabloids here. Find out what's going on. Um, you know, there's there's some stories where people are are literally uh, going mad. They've they've gone crazy um, with this interruption of life and. Uh, you know, for 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 many, it's been a huge interruption, no no doubt. And for others, quite honestly, um, it's been a in many ways, it's been a blessing in disguise. But people are just, uh, I don't know, beating up their neighbors and uh, uh, just the police reports that are that are coming out of this country, especially down in Florida, just some wacky, wacky stuff. Uh, Washington State, um, where they just had a couple of uh, new cases of coronavirus. Um, they're now having COVID-19 parties, apparently. And at these events, attendees deliberately rub shoulders with an infected person so that they can catch coronavirus and get over it. This is going on uh, in Washington State. The story comes out of Olympia, Washington. I'm not kidding. Google it if you don't believe me. Uh, two parties have been reported just yesterday in southeastern Washington uh, that have now led today to at least two known infections. The two people who caught the disease are young 
and so far as of uh, right now have not yet needed to be hospitalized is it just me or is the is your blood pressure uh, going up too reading about this um wow we have the <laughs> the airing of a raunchy deodorant commercial is causing some outrage among some british parents we'll have to get Sherilyn to weigh in on this uh links africa aired the one minute ad during britain's got talent gaining hundreds of viewer complaints the day after the 25th anniversary commercial features a male from teen to adulthood trying to use this product to get the girl of his dreams before uh, turning to show a squirrel excitedly humping the spray can. Metro UK, UK reports the ad aired before the 9 p.m. cutoff when more adult content is permitted. The Advertising Standards Authority in Britain says they are reviewing the 155 complaints received and deciding on a possible investigation many parents expressed their outrage online admitting that they had to shield their children's eyes from the quote disgusting visuals it's just a squirrel humping a uh, a can it's it is it i don't know i don't know if it's that much of a big deal but anyway it's Everything's a big deal if we make it a big deal, right? Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Uh, what did I see? Oh, the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are throwing a virtual pizza party. Did you hear about this? Everyone's invited. Cowabunga. We're going to have some fun. The cast from the original 1990 movie is celebrating 30 years. They had a bunch of staff uh, uh that had this all planned out actually right up until the pandemic hit. Um, but they decided that they're going to go through with it and, and host it all right here on Zoom. And get, get this, it takes place on uh, May 23rd, which is World Turtle Day. It's got to be. Uh, YouTube TV is adding 14 Viacom CBS channels to its streaming lineup. This is uh, including Comedy Central, MTV, Nickelodeon, and BET. Uh, the channels are going to begin showing up in the menu this summer. If you're a fan of uh, YouTube TV, about 2 million people watch the Google loan streaming service instead of getting their TV from cable or satellite. I've got a, a whole bunch of friends that, uh, that do just that and they love it. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Chipotle serving up a night to remember for high school seniors forced to miss their prom. The restaurant chain is going to host a virtual after prom party on May 16th. 10,000 promo codes will be given out for free meals and prizes. And one lucky winner will get a $25,000 scholarship. Students can uh, get on the list by following Chipotle after party on Instagram. Man, are we coming up with some uh, pretty creative ideas to stay connected? Um, White Claw added again <clears throat> with uh, two new flavors. And there's a little bit of a twist, though. Pineapple and Clementine, 70 calories. They also have less alcohol than the other 100-calorie cans. The hard seltzer, which, of course, uh, came out a couple of years ago and exploded last summer to the point of a shortage. Uh, <clears throat> all 10 flavors fully stocked and the new additions are on shelves right now pineapple and clementine if you're into the uh into the white claw stuff uh gary schneider 90 years old today uh singer tony Tennille. remember captain and Tennille? 
80 years old. Wow. Uh, let's see. James Mitchum is 79. Gary Glitter. Didn't even know the dude was still alive. 76 years old. Rock and roll part two. Gary Glitter. Uh, Keith Jarrett, 75. Uh, Philip Bailey of uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire, 69 years old. Love that band. Van Halen drummer Alex Van Halen is 67. Look at the uh, the numbers on these people. Melissa Gilbert, 56. Enrique Iglesias, son of Julio, is uh, 45. And who else did, uh, did I see here that jumped out at me? I think that was it. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. The uh, getting real here for just a, a quick minute, and we're going to bring in Rusty Dewey's is going to be joining us here in just a few minutes. Uh, coronavirus has taken out more than 75,000 people in the United States. Um, the nation passed the benchmark as states began to gradually reopen. And there are so many people that have uh, opinions about this. Is it too soon to, to start reopening? Are we just going to, uh, you know, is this just our, our government involved in uh, a conspiracy to keep the coronavirus uh, alive? That's uh, what I've heard by states uh, opening up or starting to open up gradually. New York, of course, continues to be the biggest hotspot with uh, one out of three deaths. That's a lot, man. Uh, neighboring New Jersey, 9 million people, 9,000 deaths. And across America, uh, there's been more than 1.2 million confirmed cases of uh, COVID-19. President Trump has offered to give Russia ventilators to fight the coronavirus outbreak. Did you see that story? Meanwhile, uh, we're, you know, we've been dealing with the ventilator shortage and even making our own here in America. But Trump wants to uh, hand over some ventilators to, to Russia. Okay. New York City is expanding antibody testing for COVID-19. The mayor, Bill de Blasio, says the aim is to test 140,000 New Yorkers at sites in every borough over the next uh, couple of months. Hotels across New York City opening their rooms to people with mild cases of coronavirus. Give them a chance to recover in uh, isolation without uh, getting their families at home sick. Can you believe this? Patients will be provided food, access to a pharmacy, and will be checked on daily. Wow. Basically, to see if they're still alive. The program was originally set up for healthcare workers. About 20,000 rooms are available with plans to expand. This stuff is crazy. It's crazy. All right, let's, uh, let's have a couple of uh, laughs right now, and we're going to bring them in right now. This, this is, uh, well, a guy that certainly knows how to make us laugh during this whole coronavirus uh, crap that we're dealing with right now. And uh, Rusty Deweese is is checking in with us. Uh, looks like he might be, I'm not sure if he's live in his, in his barn or, yeah, I see you, Russ. Can you hear us? I don't know if we can hear him. Give me a thumbs up if uh, if you can hear me. Can you hear me? I don't know if I can hear him. Can you hear me, Russ? Oh. 
I don't know why I can't hear him. Well, we're going to uh, just see if we can get him on here. And get him here live on the show. Probably because he's using a, you know, I don't know, in a uh, an iPhone. Russ, can you hear us? Yeah. Well, uh, just checking, uh, checking everything here. It looks like we are not going to be able to get Rusty on. But we will continue to try. You Clicking are using- around the... There he is. Hey, buddy. How are you doing, man? We're good. 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 We're we're great. Yeah. What's going on? You look fabulous. What happened to the beard? Hang on a second. Did you just shave that off yesterday? No. Um, uh, Oh, no. That picture that I sent you was from a while ago, you know. Oh. Shaved that off in March, I think. Yeah. Is, it a, is, is it a pain in the ass to have a beard that big? Because you fluctuate. You, you do the whole beard thing, and then you, you, you just you go from the North Pole to the South Pole in like once, once or twice a year. Thanks for wearing the hat, by the way. Um, yeah. No, it's not, it's not a pain in any way, shape, or form either, either way. Uh, that was a big beard, and it was funny because uh, when, when the breeze, you'd be outside, the breeze would come. It was like, you know, like please. <laughs> It was cool, man. I liked it. Russ, I wear this hat <laughs> all day. Um, I see, I see it, yeah. I just, all the time. And partly is, to be honest, is, you know, because I love to to support you and, and yes. you gave me the hat and I, and I love the hat. The other side is, quite frankly, that, buddy, the hair is so bad. I mean, I can't. I. I mean, I can't even go out in the yard with with my hair, buddy. I mean, if people drive by and they saw me without this hat on, or any well, you hat ha- on, you have good hair. But uh, I will say, that's one thing that I've usually I would shower at least once a day. But yeah. since we've been on this so called whatever it is, uh, yeah, you want to call it, I. I don't. I. I get up in the morning and I exercise. And then I'll come back to the house from the barn or from outside, literally yeah. right here. And uh, I'm not really, I'm not a stinking guy anyway, you know? Yeah. So then I like eat my little thing and then I'll be like, well, later I'm going to go out and, you know, cut a lot of prickers and cut a lot of trees. So I was no reason to shower. And then I'll do that. And I wash my hands and stuff, the grease yeah. and everything from the track. And then it's like dinner time. And it's like, I go out to the barn and sit and do some work. Hey, go to bed, man. Wake up to the same oh, yeah. thing. So, yeah, so the hair, the hair isn't that great. Yeah. Russ, how, how have you been? You know, it's it, it's been so long since I've had a chance to chat with you. You know, what do you think about all this? I'm going to ask you in a minute here what, what you've been doing. But yeah. first off, what do you think about all this? This is crazy. Well, there's a lot, as you know, and you're in the business of asking and thinking <clears throat> there's a lot one can say first of all i don't i'm not a guy that knows specifics uh, i i know a few more around vermont you know i don't follow media but since this has come up i have been more the phil scott <clears throat> meetings and things because it affects the bit my business but of course uh, so obviously you don't want anyone to be sick and die uh in my case i don't and uh I do, I do know that um, that Vermont is the numbers are down, not just because Vermont is small. I think it's for me. I can only speak for me. I've volunteered for three different, taking food to homeless, picking up old computers, bringing them to people, and I'm saying that only because someone may hear what I have to say and think, well, he's a heartless guy. He he only thinks of himself. So yeah, like three different organizations I, I, I uh, volunteer for. For me, it's exciting. P- 
personally, because first of all, I don't live with anyone, no one, uh, I don't have a child like you. I don't have an older parent uh, anymore. My mother's birthday today, actually. Happy she birthday, would, mom. Yeah, she would have been 90. So, 90 years old. Yeah. And she lived 86 is pretty good, as you know. But So the actual realistically, how am I doing? I'm doing fine. My life is the same. I don't watch sports. I don't do many things. And I also don't believe in ownership and permanence. I'm not, I believe in ownership and permanence, but for me, I don't feel I own and, and nothing is permanent. So when something comes up like this, I don't feel anything has been taken from me. No yeah. freedoms. Uh, yet I am very sensitive to other people and I wear the mask, of course. And, and uh, so that's how I, I saved a couple of, my job is shot for who yeah. knows how long it's tough to get you know it's going to be one of the last things uh, not essential to to have people sitting close in groups of 100 150 and 200 but it can be done i think our vermont people are doing a great job from what i gather and sure if i rent a 20 225 seat town hall and phil scott says you can restaurants and these kind of gatherings can fill to 25 percent well 25 percent of 200 mm. is uh f 50 people yeah the tiny town hall tour show you're right <laughs> so wear yes. your mask if you come yeah. with your wife you can be next to her anyway i'll put out seats certain things everybody yeah. by then whenever that could be a year from now a year and a half or the fall but people will be normal, used to it, and they'll get entertainment. I don't cry for Argentina. For me, things are fine for me. For it's exciting. I made that, and I'll let you talk. Uh, you asked me the question. The one st statement I said is exciting. From here, where does I look at? I have a business. It happens to be entertainment, and I have a life. The two are related in certain ways, but they're not related in the way that my business. I need. I don't need that. My heart and my blood and oxygen and movement and communication with people. I need that. That's all fine. The business will come around. Isn't it remarkable uh, that we are living through this, this time? This is, you know, we keep hearing the word unprecedented, but it, it really is. I mean, this is something that's, you know, we never saw this coming at least most of us didn't and well, we'll, we'll be able to you know tell our kids i'll be able to tell lily hey i was home with you during the whole coronavirus and it was a was a full-time dad with you and entertaining you all day while while mommy was working from home you know <laughs> She'll probably have some recollection. I don't know. You know, people, they remember when they're five or whatever. But, you know. Sure. Yeah. Unprecedented to us, maybe, but it's so, certainly not unprecedented in history. And, and that's another thing that, uh, well, maybe, and it won't hang on with everyone for long. But as you know, I, I just think everything is frail. And uh, this isn't a surprise to me. It's, not, it's a surprise. Oh, yeah, I knew a pandemic was coming and I knew it would be a virus. No. That is to say, not to, I'm not a pessimistic guy. You know me as a glass full guy. Yes. Something will come along potentially in our lifetime. Maybe two things. Can you see the cat? Oh, yeah. Something will come along. I think it's good to keep it somewhere in your head. Something will come along that could make this look like a birthday party. Yeah. So yeah, now wow. we know. Now we know if you're 60, yeah, you haven't seen this. If you're 70, you haven't seen this. You could, you could have read about it in the history books, but you couldn't have experienced it. So, yes, it is very fresh uh, to, to me uh, and, and you and everyone. It's pretty interesting in that sense. Isn't it also interesting how, you know, to, to observe how so many of us, um, especially here in America, especially here in Vermont, have reacted to this there, there are so many different ways there there there's a couple of different you know 
camps. There's the anti-government uh, naysayers who don't believe in any of this, and it's just a conspiracy, and it's just a, something that was created and man-made and what have you, and, um, you know, don't believe in any of it. And then there's the folks that are kind of, um, yeah, I believe it, um, but, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to keep it in check. I'm not going to go overboard here. I'm going to, I'm going to do what's, what's, what's advised, what's suggested, what's asked of me uh, to wear a mask and uh, the hand sanitizer and all that in, in public. Uh, but I'm not going to go over the top. And then we've got folks who this has created a sense of paranoia that has reached into extreme levels, people that uh, won't leave their homes or, you know, uh, when they do, you know, it's basically to stick their head out uh, of the window and, and get a breath of fresh air, you know, and then, you, you know, like we, we were out, uh, you know, we did a quick, uh, a quick shop yesterday just to get some, some essentials, you know, and, you know, like food essentials and to, to, to see to see the people in you know in the grocery stores or in walmart you know not the employees but but the shoppers and some people are walking around no mask no gloves and they'll be shopping right next to somebody who's got rubber gloves on and you know masks and you know a mask that's underneath the handkerchief that's that's up uh, almost covering their eyes you know, and the looks that these people give each other is like, you know, the guy with the with the mask and the gloves is looking over at the guy without it and just pissed. Like, I can't believe you're not wearing a mask. And the guy that's not wearing the mask is looking at the other guy like you're a freak. You're a freak. You know, it's it's just it's all over the road, my man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's probably, we all try to do with the things in life, everything that we do, as we see fit for ourselves. And uh, in this case, that was great the way you put that. There's three levels of it. And, uh, you know, um, I, this is what I find, JD. I go shopping. I, I do my shopping in Burlington at a certain store I like. And... Uh, your food, people, food, you, grocery shopping. You're food. talking about, yeah, okay. yeah, food, yeah, yeah, food. And uh, I find that it's I'm pretty interested because I'm tall, and uh, if I'm coming down an aisle, I try to be really respectful. A lot of times, uh, male or female, 45, 50, 55, 35, and I like to get their eye and uh, so that they know that I will get the hang out of the way. I'm surprised at how many of the people who are all geared up with gear just will just don't even really care that I'm giving them that space and they'll just yes. bump right up against me. So they're, they're kind of both. They're all geared up, but yet now that I'm geared up, uh, that guy can come up and like grab the thing right next to my thing. They're, they're really kind of open to it. So it's very interesting. And uh, I think our, 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 like you said, their suggestions they're not orders. They're not laws that these things have been. Yeah. And it was very interesting the way they had to do that. So I think uh, the, the people who are trying to be the ones who know about the science and know about everything, they've put that out there. And they're just saying, you know, if JD and Sherilyn and Lily are doing it, well, that's three. If Rusty does it, that's four. If two others don't, well, it's four who are doing it and two of them aren't sure we're ahead of the game by two so right you know and I, you know me man somebody could come up to me and sneeze and shit all over me and i'm not gonna judge them i mean it's just you're on your own man you're it's yeah. telling us it's a good thing that's why i'm excited it's telling us we are on our own and we are very delicate i'm telling you i would go with my friends and you even and it, it was a hoot nanny here there are poor people in the world there are people who are sick pre this. There are people who are going through difficult times in their personal lives. But generally, um, we were going nuts. 
with the fancy coffees and the fancy beers and the fancy cheeses. I'm all for it. Yeah. Love, love all of that. And come to Vermont and the lakes and the stream. I mean, it was catch as catch can and a hoot nanny. Yeah. I want it to be that again. Yes. Maybe with a sprinkle of, hey, by the way, <laughs> yeah, let's right. really understand that this is unusual how we're living. You know, as I'm speaking to you, you've been to my house many times. And let little flurries coming down out the window. Very beautiful. The flurry. So see, that's the thing. Let's enjoy the flurries. We can have the fancy coffee too. But man, the people from Connecticut and Massachusetts and the bing and the bang. And I would say to my friends, I say, this is freaking up. A Vermont, man. I don't yeah. care if you're in Topsham. Yeah. Or if you're in Woodstock or yeah. if you're in Ferdinand. This was a fun place to be. Yes. <laughs> Pretty yes. Innocent. Nobody's killing. I mean, yep. some people are killing other people in Vermont. Yeah. But not many. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? It is, oh, it is, man. It is a, if, if there's a state to be uh, to be locked down and, and quarantined at, uh, this is, yeah, I totally agree with you, man. You know, it's like you, you've been to, you've been over to my house. You've seen my property. And yeah, there's with the river. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You know, I, you know, I've, I've been here for 17 years. I had to think about that uh, in that house weeks ago. 17 years yes and the, the, i remember when when i bought the house i was like oh this 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 land here this is going to be perfect for a, a big ass garden i'm going to have a huge garden 17 years every march <laughs> and april i would say gonna have a garden <laughs> never did i never did seven gonna this year though you bet your ass. I said, you know what? I said, right. this, you know, you, you, you talk about be, have, being in Vermont, being a great state to be quarantined at. This is my example to that is I've got all, you know, I've got plenty of land to have a, a big ass garden. And yeah. this was it. I was like, you know what? I now I have the time. I, I've never had the time to do the garden. And we got the rototiller over here, and we now have a check. This you're not going to believe this. Thirty feet by one hundred. Really, you're going for it. Good for you, man. Yeah, we great. got the we got the corn. We got the cucumbers, radishes. Name it. It's in there. Let me ask you this, because I asked somebody yesterday who, and I'm going to do. I have done little dinky ones, and I'll do another little dinky one. But boy, it's snowing pretty. But um. The guy, I asked a farmer guy, and he said, "Don't, don't, don't bother till May planting those things." When oh are yeah. You, when, are you, when are you? I mean, he said Memorial Day. In fact, absolutely. So is that, that when you're going to do? Oh, yeah. for sure, for sure. Yeah, we're we've got the uh, the seed. We're we're doing the seed trays indoors. Where Lily, you know, we need to do something during the day, Ross. So why not? <laughs> you know, you got to plant seeds. You know, if you can get a five year old to poke a hole into, you know. 10,000 little seedling tray things and, and put one seed in at a time. You got to do it. So yeah. that's what we're, that's it's what fun. we're doing. It, yeah, it's fun. It, it's fun. We're, we're excited. And See, it's exciting. You said, well, you said the word. You yeah. said the word I said. Yeah. How are you doing in this thing? I find it exciting. Yeah. The whole thing. There are, there are so many great po things that have, that have come out of this. My, <laughs> You know, my relationship with with Lily and and don't be surprised if she jumps on camera here any second, because every time she hears that I'm I'm doing a show, she she wants to sit on my shoulders. But um, which are killing me, by the way, from all the gardening. <laughs> but, uh, you know, yeah, these the, in many ways, these are exciting times. We have reconnected with people and have spent time with with people that that we uh, that we haven't uh in, right. in so long so um you know but um the, that's not to lose the fact that this many people are are having difficult times with uh you know older people who may not have been healthy in the first place who, who are uh you know susceptible to this and the boy it's a hell of a way to die from what i hear man yeah there they there's so many the, the uh, there's the, it doesn't matter if it's a hospital or or a nursing home uh you know they're they're locked down and the 
the general public, the family and, and, and visitors are, are not able to, uh, to come in and, and, and see and, and hug and, and touch their, their loved ones, their moms, dads, uh, relatives, unless it is an end of life situation. And still then you, you've got a limited amount of time for, for how long you're, you're allowed in, in that building. It's, this is, uh, these are definitely, uh, very tough times. You know, one of the things that I'm, I'm kind of curious about, and you, like I said, you know me, Russ, you know, I'm a hugger and a handshaker. Yeah, right, right. Going forward, you know, um, and I want my, my grip on my, on my shaking hand is, is so bad now because of the wrist oh, surgery. Sure. Oh, it's just, I'm just like, my God, I, it can, I can't even, you know, just holding a cup of coffee hurts. But, you know, going forward, do you think there's going to be a, a sense of, you know, folks who were not germaphobes before this, many folks are now going to be germaphobes. Let's say there were, you know, 20% of us in America were germaphobes before this. After this, I wonder if that's going to be. 70%, 60%, 80%, you know, will will we as a human race be uh, less likely to hug someone in the grocery store that we haven't seen in a long time? Hey, oh my God, how you doing? How's your mom? Big hug, handshake. Will we not be hugging anymore and, 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 shaking hands I, I just wonder you know me, if this let is me real you, let me put it to you this way at first yeah there'll be less but uh you just said 17 years you repeated it like three times 17 years you've been living in that house 17 yeah. years 17 years went by in a flash yeah oh yeah 17 years from now we'll go by in a flash 17 years from now this will be dust on on the billiard table flick yeah. it off in people's minds so <clears throat> so the now will that tradition come back in earnest even in 17 years i think it will so that's the first thing is yeah there'll be less of this they're gonna ease the, finally the masks will come off that could be two years from now who the hell knows and then but the, the, the hugging but i think this to answer your question also yeah the 17 years thing, this, this is going to be a distant memory believe me unless something else comes up that that's, but um, you're going to know person to person, you know, you uh, asked me at the, our, our Christmas celebration, me and you always do on your, right. on your live programs. You said, you know, how do you know if it's someone is of a uh, Hanukkah? Yeah. How do you know if you're going to say happy holidays? How are you going to know if you say a Merry Christmas, Russ, what should you do? Well, you know, mostly, and you'll know which guys that shake hands and which guys don't. All right. So you can, I, you, you, you're going to know as the time, as the days, months, years go on, it's going to be certain friends. There will be the hugging and the shaking hand. This will be a distant memory. Believe me. Are you going to be okay if, like, if I come over to your house or the next time I see you, if instead of, of shaking your hand or giving you a hug, are you going to be okay if I were to, you know, grab your ass? I would prefer that actually over okay. a, over a hug. Ass grab is a small piece of my body. When yeah. you're hugging, you're it's there's more contact. It, um, yeah. So uh, if you want to get in deeper to it, people, you know, your naysayers are going to naysay this. Don't forget naysayers. I've uh, I, I'm volunteer. I'm feeding the homeless during the peak of this, so I'm doing my part. But yes. I think from what I gather. Certain human beings right now are very, I hear doctors, lawyer, uh, not the lawyers, I hear doctors they just say this over and over. If you cut through the fear mongering that the media wants you to do so they can sell palm olive dish liquid, what you hear is there's a certain segment of the population, the infirm, who are very it's dangerous getting this. There's a, there's a huge section of the population, 
most of Vermont, most that um, ain't getting it. And if they do, they ain't going to even, it's not going to bother them. Now, I might eat my words and sit here and I'll be on a respirator in two weeks. And they'll say, you see what he said? And he went and got it. Yeah. But I have to believe the average. You can't go through life. So I'm I'm going to say that I would probably be one of the first people that would uh, add back in the handshaking. Interesting. Because what I'm gathering, and I don't dick around. You know, you hear Dr. Levine and you and you hear Dr. Agus and and I read, and uh, it always comes down to there's a line in there that says. 88% of the people who get this are of a certain age. 90% of that 80% are diabetic and no morbidly obese, you know. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm looking at a certain stuff. So, but I think you're going to know about the handshakers as you go on and then it'll filter into there's people being born right now today who will be 17 years, 17 years old, 17 years from now. Who'll be shaking who, you know, is that sure. tradition going to be cut to the end? Not until we're all dead. That'll never stop until we who grew up with that are dead and gone. Right. So the, maybe the new generations will be, don't shake, don't touch, don't do that. Sure. But the new generation, a kid being born today has a parent that's between 25 and 40. And yeah. those people grew up with it. So oh, yeah. The, well, I mean, now. Steal that? They could instill that into Lily, you know, and so anyway. Sure. I mean, now it's all, you know, the, the fist bump, the elbow touch, you yeah. know, all so, that. Dude. And those things change. That's the thing about this. It's saying, it's saying right. you live in your, I live in my little 90 or a hundred year span. That's what I know of life. If I'm yeah. so foolish as to think that that's all that's going to happen. Yeah. You know, things change, man. We're physical beings though. And so many of us, you know, we we need to touch. You know, I'm a touchy guy. When I see someone who uh, that I like, I haven't seen in a while, I like to have physical contact. I, I put my hand on your shoulder, or what it, whatever it may be. Russ, you are. Um, it may be a while, and, and a while could be two months, two weeks, <clears throat> uh, a half a year, a year before they're going to say, "Go ahead and do that." But you'll be doing that plenty. Of, don't you're worry. you're a, you're a single guy. Um, yeah, you've got. A couple hundred cats in the house, but <laughs> but the one you're 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 somewhat of 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 a loner. Uh, you 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 live alone. You're self reliant, and I'm just wondering. You know, you're almost kind of always been kind of self quarantining. At, at least at least at the at the homestead. Right. At, at at the at the the Deweese compound, mm -hmm. but what's a typical day for Rusty Deweese, and is a typical day these days different from a typical day before this whole pandemic horseshit hit the fan? And now zero. First, first of all, um, yeah, I, I like to think that <clears throat> it's an introvert. People, many people, people have seen you know gals. Oh, you're such an extrovert. Oh, you're such an extrovert. <clears throat> They're saying that because of my job. Yeah, I've lived alone uh, my whole life, basically. But anyway, so I'm, I'm, I think I'm an introvert. But uh, yeah, going back to the beginning of our conversation, how are you doing, Russ? I'm doing fine. Uh, has anything literally in my real life changed? No. So I get up in the morning, exercise. Mo not mo not every morning, but most mornings, different things. You know, yesterday I did a five-hour hike around up up the ridge, and down. anyway. Uh, and then I'll and then I'll uh, have a little something to eat, and then I go down, and then I do my hit the I hit the road every day. I gotta go to healthy living. I gotta go here. I that's my contact. I have a couple of buddies, Eric Adams. You know Eric Adams. He's yep. building this car. He's he, we're standing far away from each other, so I have that connection. Same as I always did. Come yeah. home, hit the emails. Well, there's less work email to do, but no, sure. I'm booking up fall. In case well, fall is able to go, and I do that, and then go ahead. Uh, yeah, That's no, I wanted to, I wanted to ask you about what's what's on the horizon for you, but I also I'm dying to hear, you know, and I'm imagine and I haven't spoken with you in weeks, but I have imagined over the last couple of weeks, I'm like, Rusty gets up every day, smokes a cigar for breakfast, <laughs> no. and. 
and gets on that gorgeous John Deere. He's building rock walls and retaining walls and landscaping. And he's what in the hell has Rusty done with that big old deer? Mm -hmm. Well, every year I have I, some, quite a bit of it's clear here. And I go around with a weed whacker that has a blade on it and get down oh, every, yeah. every sapling that's come up so that it doesn't grow up. That takes many, many days. And I do that every year. Now, as you just said with Lily, now I do that. I never realized I was doing it before. Like, I got to do it an hour and a half. I got 90 minutes to do. I'll go out at four o'clock. I'll be back in at 530 because I have to practice my thing. So I have a show tomorrow. No, now I'm out in the field taking more time. I'm <clears throat> cleared more of a little view. I'm getting my wood ready now for, for next winter. Um, Interesting. So, yeah, yeah, I'm doing more, more of that. Uh, I can say, like I could say tomorrow, no email, won't play the guitar, won't practice any of my stuff. It's all outside. That's what I did yesterday. I did this whole huge hike. It was my, you know, to celebrate my mom's birthday. Uh, so, so then basically, yeah, I'll come back from my road thing, which is less road than normally, normally, and no meetings out. And then um, I do some emails. I'm playing more guitar. And, uh, and then I'll uh, go out and do like three o'clock. I'll go out and do like three hours of work. As there's more light, I, I, more work outside i got a lot of windows in this place dude you know what i mean i do them every year but now i can take my time more yeah i will do others i will do i'm gonna paint the light green on the clapboards last year i painted the dark green. uh so to answer your question and then i eat where do i go after to the barn watch the sunset and dude i'm practicing my material i'm practicing my material and i'm adding so so I then i come in i'm going to bed so i'm up at seven i'm hitting the bed around 10 it's a full day and it's the normal. It's normal. It's affected me zero from my normal life. As an artist, are you finding um, <clears throat> that you have an added percentage of free space in your mind to create content, to write material for for the future? And what is happening? A two part question here. And what is happening okay. in, in the future? What what? When are we going to see Rusty Dewey's back performing? Do do we even know? Right. Um, there's not added space because a pre-pandemic, I have to laugh and say quarantine, quarantine. We, none of us are on quarantine. You know, you come back from the moon, they quarantine your ass. You can't even, you know, take a crap. We can walk outside in our lawns. We're going shopping. That's what I say. If you think this is right. bad, folks, wait to see what's coming down. You know, you you know, if your last name if your last name ends in whatever, you can go out shopping. But one person in a store, that that would be cool. This is a fucking this is a cakewalk, people. But I uh, understand. I understand. Yeah. I understand. I've I've heard people say that, and I I know exactly what you're saying. You, you oh, still believe are, me. Yeah. Believe me, man. Right. Even through this, it's like you, you, you can do takeout from many of sure. your favorite restaurants. I mean, come on. Sure. But anyway, <laughs> 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 no, as you always had the same amount of space to do creative work. It's just how you cho choose to use it. So um, uh, I'm doing my same thing. Yeah, I'm going to the barn and doing a lot of that. Like always things, things are always coming to you in your head. Uh, so, um, oh, by the way, I, I do the comedy class. I teach the comedy class at PA and we've been doing it online. So yeah. the six, the six kids, what's what, what, when this first hit, I hit this immediately. I said, I don't know if fall will be ready, but I will be ready for fall. It's more difficult to call up the little high schools that I would rent because they're not going to rent to you. Some of the town clerks and the town administrators, when I, when I want to rent the town halls, they'll be like, well, we, can, we can't think about that now. We can't think about <clears throat> renting you in the fall. We call and call back when this thing is lifted. Well, I understand that. No one knows when it will be lifted. But many of them, Oh, hi, Ron. Oh, yeah. Listen, this is how I approach them, JD. Look, for my business, what I need, I know that we might be locked down still. For my business, what I need to do is set up a fall schedule so that if I can put 40 sure, people sure. in these halls, I'm ready to go. Now, please know that if you then call me back and say, 
Governor Scott says we can't do these things, that I'm fine with that. I will then ask you for a winter date. So I've basically hooked up a whole fall thing because I I come from a, a, a advantage in, in showbiz because, as you know, I'm mostly independent. Sure. I don't have to rely on the guy saying, hey, people can now come in and drink beer. We want to hire you, but you have to sit over there. I can... I just do my own thing. So it's a good place to be. Like I say, if I, if I rent a 300 seat town hall, if I put 70 people in there, that's 25%. Yeah. And there are people who will be coming out once they're allowed to gather in groups of 50. Yeah. They'll come to the show. It'll, it's it's going to be more difficult and everything, but I had a run with that tiny town hall tour. Yes. Material. That was hitting the marketing of it. I was hitting it and I had, so I'm not the kind of guy that goes, this came right at the wrong time. I was killing it. My thing, my model of the tiny town hall tour was going great. Hey man, I had that. It's going to be different now. Some people are losing their loved ones and everything. So that's what I've done basically, Jay, is set it up and then I'll be ready to go and re-put them up at the fall and uh, put them up into the winter and uh, keeping up with my material. I just, I have a new story. I've been working on it. I'm adding things to it. Usually that would get added as I would rehearse for an upcoming show, but then you do the show and you know, if it works, I just won't be able to do the show in front of people. But uh, so anyway, thing, things are good, man. They're great. Shifting gears. And uh, w- what's the name of your, your kitty cat again? Michaela, after the uh, great uh, skier, uh, Michaela Schiffer. I just came out of the sun there in different light. Are you, um, are you concerned that Michaela is getting in into the, into the couch too much? No, because when I, you know, again, again, when I get a cat, I say I'm getting a cat. I can't worry about my furniture. And uh, no, <laughs> no, I mean, look, look, you guys. Here she gets on this little thing. Yeah. You can see maybe a little rubbins. She gets on that. You can see little rubbins, but that's all right. No, no, I'm not concerned. No, I don't get a dog. I would love to have a dog. I do not get a dog because I am not prepared at this point in my life to treat a dog the way I think a dog should be treated, which is with great uh, affection and a lot of time put into the dog. You know? I saw a picture of you on social media a week ago or 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 two with it with a dog, and I said, "Oh my God, Rusty yeah. got a dog." That would be yeah. great. Hey, uh, what, not quite ready yet. What is um? What is that behind you? It it looks like, oh, like a like a little mini barn or something. That's oh, well, that's that's my indoor outhouse, ladies and gentlemen of the aired out uh, viewers. So inside, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you just said indoor outhouse. Indoor outhouse. This is what they call a great room, which doesn't mean it's great. I think it means it's of a sizable. It's also called a frog. You know what a frog? Uh, yeah, that a frog is uh, above the garage. Yeah, finished room. Yes, over garage. So yes. there's yes. where I do my my little uh, stuff, my little emails and stuff. There's a beautiful window out to the woods. There's a TV that does not isn't hooked up, doesn't get anything. Um, I, you can put the v, uh, DVD thing. This is the big couch. There's out where I saw the snow, and over here, this is the leather chair mom and dad gave me. Big uh, antique things. And then here you can look out to the barn. And that whole gully is where I whip down the barn line. God, part, of whip, part of where I whip down everything. So this is an outhouse. It's an indoor outhouse with a tin roof. And, you know, it's the only outhouse I know of, listeners, with central vac. <laughs> now, you go in the outhouse. I got this door and everything, and it's woodpecker barn board. You go in the outhouse, and you put the hanging light on, which I got at um, Architectural Salvage. We used to be at the bottom of Main Street in Burlington. In Burlington. I also went to uh, Five Corners, Mason Brothers, and got a lot of this stuff. There's a sap bucket sink, see? And then the, the push button, push button come out. Here's the wooden me. Parents got me out. Here's the uh, 
1983, 1984, college, uh, Champlain College basketball. Aren't you all fascinated by that? We're, we're inside Rusty DeLise's outhouse. This is Cribs. This is in his house. <laughs> Cribs. Rusty. Yeah, then, then so, this, is the, this is the good view. This is now Mount, right out to Mount Mansfield, but it's clouded over. Wow. Anyway. Wow. That's the Wait, outhouse. Hang on a second. Let's see that view again. I want to see that view again. I'll take God, you out. Amazing. <clears throat> oh, wow. So, oh, man. That's like Morrisville over there and, and uh, Hyde Park. Then you go Sterling Valley. That's the golf course. And you're looking at Mansfield. I don't know if you can see the runs. And yeah. then you over towards Traps and then Camel, Camel's Hump. And they do. Them camels are horny. There's a little bird's nest up in the corner here. That's where I get my eggs. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, we gonna do are we gonna do the Christmas? You know, you know, when we get to May, isn't it amazing? <clears throat> like June fifteenth, we're halfway to Christmas. Already. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna do our Christmas show. You know? Yes, yes, please. I, I hope I hope we can. Russ, um, I can't thank you enough for, Thanks for having me. Yeah, for bringing us in your home and connecting in with you this morning and, and giving us some Lady! <laughs> Jerry Lewis. Do you do you wipe the books on the on the sweatshirt? Then no book came out. You know, I'm a guy, my sister and I were talking about this. I'm a guy that doesn't that we don't I don't sniffle. How many times, even when back in the days I when, do. You, when you and I were working the wicked, 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 crazy hours and I was pumping out, I'd come to your studio at 5.30 in the morning and I'd been yeah. up till 2 and, and I'd be sick. I'd be run down. But I wasn't coughing and sniffling. I'm just not a coughing and sniffler guy yeah. for the most part. Yeah, well, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. And you've done so well with the, the aired out and uh, since when you started with, you know, I do, wa I do watch. I mean, it really is a welcome thing when, and I'm not shitting you, you know, we're actually good friends, but I can, uh, you're good at it. I can, I'll be somewhere and I'll have this phone. I got one of them nice iPhones and boom, and there's your thing. And yeah. It's Tim Rick or it's yeah. Chad or whoever, you know, and, and, and I did watch the Jake Blauvel. I did, oh, yeah. You asked me to watch that and I watched that. Yeah. Jake's amazing. And what's nice, Russ, is that I'm, I'm hearing from a lot of people that are just listening to the audio while they're driving in their cars and one Absolutely. guy one guy's got it out when he's outdoors uh walking around that's the way i listen to a lot of things and i listen to jake that way i have these yeah. overalls in the car heart and i rake and everything and it has a zip thing here i just yeah. put that phone in there and I, and I hear the stuff yeah. unbelievable hey by the way before i forget patrick yeah, that's, Ross. that's that's me that's me on quarantine you know stuff yeah like, i know go ahead Patrick Ross is coming on uh, from his home here oh, on Aired Out, I think on the 19th. So okay. coming up uh, real soon. I'll make sure that it's pre-promoted. But I guess he's uh, <clears throat> kind of unsure whether or not he's going to have to pull the plug on his uh, festival that he does up at his property. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that. I'm, I, I would say for him, and it seems like he's, he's unsure, and he should be unsure. I don't think he should pull yeah. the gold our plug yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, maybe, you know, again, it, it, that's, that's building up into a nice big thing. But but let's say at that, you know, three weeks before, and I, I know you got sponsors and everything and you have to tell them beforehand. But the way he does it, I haven't talked to him yet. I was thinking about this the other day. He can just do it on a really small scale if they don't want it to be the bigger scale. Sure. And so I don't, yeah, I, I think he's smart. I thought the other day, you know, I haven't heard anything from Patrick about canceling this thing. That's good. Yeah, keep keep yeah. it keep it in there. Maybe you can have sure, it at sure. some rate. You know? Sure, Good. sure. Russ, uh, before we let you go, final question. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait for this one. I'm just I'm I'm just wondering if you have enough toilet paper, and if you don't, if you were to run out, if the world, if we were just to stop toilet paper production, if you were not able to buy toilet paper what would you use well it wouldn't phase would, me a bit as you would know. you use your your bare your bare hand and then just wash your hands 
not only would I, but I, I have and I do. But listen, that's another thing. Make it make the point of when this whole thing was happening, just a quick point that you and I like to talk about. Seeing the empty shelves of toilet paper people were hoarding. I know I understand that we don't want people to hoard. But man, I was going to the markets around here. Our local Vermont, I can't speak for Detroit. Our local Vermont markets, not only was you could get toilet paper, I understand most people, a lot of people, a lot of people hoarding, but the food was coming in. And I would show the tractor trailers with these guys and girls with the, the pallets full of food. And I would do the Instagram. I say, look, you may be seeing the news where it's looking at dead shelves and you're going crazy, but don't worry. There's going to be food. And I went to talk to the guys at Shaw's and the girls at Hannaford's and they said, no, no, we're all set. So yeah. Yeah. Real tough pandemic where, where, where we'll all come out of it, you know, heavier because there's so much in this country. There's so much money that it's not going to go. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty rosy, difficult time we're having. If you look at it in a certain way, again, people, I volunteer, I help people. I'm in a certain position in my life where I'm a single guy. I understand it's tough, but really, let's just look at it. And uh, But Patrick Ross, he had a whole, whole I got to talk to him about his things. Anyway, all right, man. No, uh, fingers, you know. Yeah. Every once in a while, you got, you got to wipe with the, you know, you're out there. And then you just onto the lawn with the hand. It's yeah. this is, simple. You know, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, uh, you know, a finger up the rectum. You know, I, mean? I definitely will not be shaking your hand when i see you next for us but i am the one guy that you'll know to say happy hanukkah no handshaking <laughs> i love you buddy all right over, man. And out, over and out be be well now i gotta see if i can get off this thing i don't want to be looking I, at you get you meal. off right get you off right now love the, love you to pieces man <laughs> see that's, that's rusty deweez uh this morning ah, such a great guy such a great guy and Always so fun to connect with him. Uh, listen, uh, take care of one another. I think that's uh, the message that we've been um, <clears throat> that we've been pushing all along here. And uh, just go easy, keep things in perspective, and uh, just take one day at a time. If you're having a, a tough time through this this whole thing. Uh, thanks again to Aeromed Essentials, my presenting sponsor, uh, Berlin Mall and State Street in Montpelier. They're going to be reopening their doors uh, real, real soon. And I can't wait for it. 505-1405. Uh, if you want to order after you get on AeromedEssentials.com, they'll ship right to your door. Uh, Wright Electric, Chris Wright, another presenting sponsor along with Fontaine Forestry and Millworks of East Montpelier. It was over there yesterday uh, seeing Mark and Sharon, a great, great people. The uh, hemlock and the cedar bark mulch is moving fast. And it, well, no surprise, at $5 for a two-cubic-foot bag, that's a special they've got going on right now. So get yourself over there. They're on Route 14, just below Bragg Farm. You can bring your pickup, you can uh, bring your Cadillac, whatever it may be, um, and they'll they'll help you out, all right? Two cubic foot bags for five bucks, cedar or hemlock. Uh, you can also do uh, wood chips. They've got uh, plenty over there. Everything's fresh. Uh, if you want to get any of these uh, things delivered to your home, they'll do that real easy it's 40 bucks they'll bring it right to your place you don't have to worry about anything or getting any of that bark mulch in your trunk or in the back seat which is a bitch to vacuum out so think about uh delivery that's a great option over at fontaine's um, of course uh, all the rough cut and, and everything that they do over there uh with the fancy miser saw they're building and helping you build homes and outbuildings and they're just they're so talented never really been fascinated with lumber until i've gone over there we over there yesterday just looking around gorgeous gorgeous uh locally harvested 
uh, high quality lumber. Yeah. Fontaine Sawmill. Dot com. Fontaine's Sawmill. Dot com. Check them out. And Jason Gothier, Gothier's Quality Grounds and Maintenance. You're going to be here in the mowers real, real soon. Weed Whackers. The guy is uh, landscaping right now. He's got a couple of uh, retaining wall projects, and he is buried deep in trash with his new side biz part of Gothier's Quality Grounds and Maintenance, which is Trash King Trash Removal. Get in touch with Jason Gothier on Facebook. It's that easy. Jason Gothier. Tell him I sent you. Get a free estimate for mowing landscaping, trash removal. If you're anywhere in central Vermont, he'll pop over to the house. He'll give you a free estimate. And is he less expensive for the uh, trash removal than the big guys? You bet. He sure is. Have a great rest of your day. We will catch you very soon. we got a full lineup next week of uh, great guests that I cannot wait uh, to, to get on. Um, so I'll be uh, I'll be in touch with you over the weekend. Get be good to one another. We'll catch you real soon. God bless. And over and out for now.